This short video focuses on research collaborations, attending academic conferences, and how your conferences and collaborations are used to advance your research agenda and how that is reflected in your CV. Start with the developmental CV and how it can be helpful as a starting point for your X year plan and also useful as a way to plan for developing and establishing your research agenda. Planning is unique to the individual. So the planning horizon might be three years for some, five years for others. So think about the X year plan in a way that connects to your planning horizon. In creating your developmental CV, the first thing you want to do is to include all relevant headings, teaching experience, research experience, professional development experiences, etc., in the developmental CV. The link on this slide has a basic CV template with different headings that you can use. Once you have populated your CV, you might have some blank sections on the CV or sections that only have a little content. These sections can be used as placeholders to be populated with content once you have items to report on your CV. They can help in identifying gaps and activities to undertake so you have items to report under the respective headings. The link on this slide provides a sample developmental CV. This sample is from 2006, way back when I was in the graduate school. Note that some sections of the CV are blank or bare. This is normal for an early stage doctoral student. Pay closer attention to the comments and plans to see my approach to filling in or populating the CV and not so much on the format or content of the CV. As you think about and plan activities and actions to fill in the CV, consider activities that can help you address multiple gaps. More importantly, don't go at it alone. For example, to populate the research and publication sections of your CV, think about how you can collaborate with your colleagues or collaborate with faculty. Think also about how you can present your research at conferences and use these conferences to get feedback on your research learn about other research, meet future collaborators, or meet other doctoral students who may offer a support network. Two comments about presenting at conferences. First, beware of predatory conferences. These are conferences that might charge exorbitant registration fees, but are often not seen as legitimate or established in the discipline. Second, conferences can be expensive when you factor in registration fees, travel costs, and time commitment. However, more virtual conference options have become available that can reduce costs. So consider these virtual options. Third, my advice is to start small. Consider local conferences. Most areas have local sections of the American Society for Public Administration that might have annual conferences or research symposia. Fourth, consider regional conferences or topical and disciplinary conferences related to your research areas. Take the time to assess different conferences and how the conference audience and focus will be helpful to you. So I mentioned how conferences are resource intensive, not to mention exhausting. To make the most of conferences, you should be strategic and purposeful. Plan ahead to present the right paper at the right conference at the right time and ask the right questions. You don't want to go to a conference for the sake of going to a conference. Instead, approach presenting at a conference as a way to get specific feedback on your paper or, or article idea or dissertation research. Ask questions of others doing similar or related research. Gauge interest in the research questions you're answering. Find collaborators. Identify next steps for taking your conference paper to a journal article or for pursuing your dissertation research, or to find out what others are doing that might feed into your research or that might help you expand your research agenda. Part of being strategic and purposeful also calls for collaborating with others. If you take a look at my CV, I collaborate extensively with faculty and students in ODU School of Public Service, with public administration and policy researchers from other universities and researchers from other disciplines across ODU and across other institutions. Why do I collaborate? Collaboration allows me to bring an interdisciplinary perspective to answering questions of interest. 
It's an opportunity to mentor graduate students and junior faculty while building off of their enthusiasm and excitement for a research project. Collaboration allows me to leverage research resources. Other researchers may have access to databases, research subjects, funding for research incentives, or specialized software. It allows me to expand the expertise needed for conducting research, such as through specific methodologies or analytical approaches, or through framing or telling the story in a different way, or with just general information or insights into developing a theoretical framework. Most importantly, collaboration allows me to build off of complementary skills of other researchers. I love starting new projects, but about three fourths of the way, I get tired. And at that point, I need others to step in and to help wrap up and conclude the project. My research collaborators are also often better at proofreading, copy editing, and catching the small things or the small issues that my big picture approach to research might overlook. So let me then conclude with some advice for how I approach collaboration. Most important is be clear about what you expect out of the collaboration. Who brings what to the collaboration? Who plays what role? If the collaboration produces a paper, how will the co-authors be listed? Having a clear communication and coordination approach is important. Will email be used to communicate and to coordinate? Some of my more established collaborations use a Slack channel, so we all know what's going on at any given point in time in the collaboration. Other collaborations have regularly scheduled Zoom meetings. Across all of these different communication and coordination approaches, I always find that it's critical to document the key decisions made by the collaborators. One thing that I learned somewhat the hard way is the importance of recognizing that not all collaborations are successful. I've had collaborations that lasted years and produced multiple journal articles, but I've also had collaborations that didn't work out so well and that I've never repeated. Part of successful collaboration, though, is being realistic that collaborative projects might take longer than if you undertook a project by yourself. Collaborations take time to communicate and to coordinate, and you'll need to accommodate the priorities and schedules of your collaborators. Ultimately, at the end of the day, treat your collaborators the way you want to be treated. Communicate, share information, Respect their time. Be compassionate.